so now we have two parameters which are being uh, which are determining the character uh, of our um, grain. So that's hopefully good news. Uh, what about a third? So we would normally be able to uh, choose a transposition amount as well, or uh, to uh, to transpose our fragment. Um, and we're going to do exactly the same thing again. So I'm going to do a, a random object, uh, sorry, random and offset um, routine. So I'll copy all this across. Uh, the only things we really need to change are um, the values between which we are choosing the range. Um, and I am, um, this may or may not be the best way to do this, but it's a way that works for me. Um, and that is to work within a kind of MIDI framework. Um, so we will assume that the middle is going to be uh, a middle C, um, as you would expect in, you know, if you were playing a sample on a keyboard, you press the key middle C and it will um, play back at this, the rate that you recorded it at. Um, but I am going to constrain the transposition amount to two octaves to either side of that. So the, at the bottom it's going to be uh, 0.25 times the playback speed and at the top it's going to be four times the playback speed. So that would allow me two octaves to either side of my uh, central amount. Um, so to do that um, I'm going to uh, again kind of operate in octaves as per MIDI. So if I choose my range slider, um, then I need to have two octaves to either side. So that's or two octaves uh, here, which would be 48 um, semitones. Uh, so I'm going to choose 49, which will allow me to go uh, for the full two octaves, uh, sorry, four octave range. Did I say two octaves? Yeah, two octaves to either side of the middle C, four octaves in total. Um, and just for clarity, uh, because uh, that's going to give us values, let's just show you this. That's only going to give you values from 0 to 48. But in fact, if we're dealing with MIDI, our middle C should be the note 60. Um, and then that, so our range would go from uh, 36 to 84. So what I need to do, um, and it will seem uh, inefficient for me to do this twice at this point rather than just adding 36 down here, um, but I'm going to do do it here anyway. So plus 36. There we go. And plus 36. And I'm just doing that so that we can see the range of each of those um, outlets. Uh, so yes, uh, now if I choose the entire range, oops, then we should get values from 36 to 84. So you can imagine that that's happening. I won't try and get through every single number to, to prove it, but anyway, it's doing it. Um, so we're getting uh, MIDI note numbers between C, bleh, C1 and C5. But that's no use to us. I couldn't just send this to uh, the groove object to tell it transpose because it doesn't operate in MIDI values. So we need to convert that to uh, a I guess a ratio of our original playback speed. Uh, so we'll use um, this little technique which I've used before in the tutorials and again still works very well for me. Uh, so I'm going to convert the MIDI note number to a frequency and then I'm going to divide the frequency that comes out by um, a reference frequency which is going to be middle C. So we know that uh, if middle C comes out um, it will come out, well I'll show you. So if I divide anything that comes out of there by 261.62508, which is the frequency of middle C, uh, we'll need a float object now. Uh, 
then if I choose middle C, which by the way is going to have to be uh, 24, so that's, 20, that's uh, middle C there because it's in the middle of our uh, 0 to 48 uh, range, then we should get the number 1 out because the frequency that's specified by 60, which is coming into here, is 62, uh, 261.6258 divided by 61.6558 will give us the number 1. Um, but if I were to choose, say, two octaves above and send that, then we've got 1046, which divided by 261.6558 is 4. So that's two octaves above. And then uh, if I go down to here, and click this again, we should get 65.4 hertz, which again divided by 261, blah, 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 is 0 0.25. Uh, so we have the appropriate ratio for any point within this range uh, for transposition. Um, now again, we are only transposing by semitones at the moment, so uh, you need uh, to perhaps um, multiply all this by a thousand and then get random to um, produce uh, a sort of higher resolution of random numbers, uh, which I won't do now, but that, that would allow you to have more, uh, specify more, uh, um, more gradation between transposition uh, if you wanted it, but I'm not going to worry about that now. So having done that, this output can go straight into uh, the sig tilde object and we can get rid of this because now we're not uh, multiplying by, you know, we're not having a one speed every time. The, the speed of playback will be determined by uh, this transposition arrangement here. Um, if we again go to middle C, we should hear it at normal playback rate, as indeed we do. Um, but and again, you should hear that these are sort of diatonic transpositions or chromatic transpositions rather than more random transpositions, but they're all within the specified range. So we have a uh, grain playback position or start point position. Actually, let's label these. So we will have one for um, grain start position, grain length. and grain transposition. Now, at some point I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you an alternative to this uh, kind of more um, uh, fluid transposition option um, and allow you to uh, transpose each grain by uh, specified notes. So you could only have, for example, uh, transpositions by octave or have transpositions by fifths or thirds or something that to you sounds um, palatable. Uh, so I'll come back to that in due course in the same way as I'm going to come back to an alternative way of doing uh, grain envelopes. But for now, we'll leave it uh, like that.